Hi, thanks for tuning into my VR Integrator How-To Series. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about child actor setup, specifically about the radial menu and the dockable menus, and also how to get the laser pointer to interact with them in your own custom pond. We'll start with the radial menu. And basically, whenever we click on a, a feature, the input will go ahead and select that category or toggle switch or whatever we want to design. We can even have it open menus up. This example is the uh, browser. And we can take that, and whenever we open and close it, wherever our radio menu is, it'll actually open up there. So uh, here, here. Or if I don't like where it's at, I can click it, drag it, or move it up and down away from me. And even when I close the menu, it stays with me, and I can go ahead and teleport. It'll go ahead and stay with me on uh, exactly the location it was spawned at. So I'm going to go how to set that up and how to get these child actors into your own custom pond. For this example, I'm using the VR expansion plugin example map, and I have added the VR integrator blueprints uh, pack to the uh, project itself. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is just uh, grab the pawn that it uses, and in this setup, it's using the to go to VR expansion and then to Vive. There's something called a Vive pawn character. So I'm going to go ahead and open that one up. So the first thing we want to do is we'll go ahead and add a radial menu child actor to the left hand. So we'll go to the left controller, we'll add a new component, we'll add a child actor, child actor, and we'll add this one a uh, child left radial. And then We'll also add a child for the right one for the pointer. So we'll go click on this one and right click and add, add new child class as well. And we'll add this one as child right pointer. All right, so then on the, the left child, what we want to do is go ahead and change the actor class component to a, uh, I name them with underscore CA, child actor CA underscore. You should see see a radial menu we'll click on that and then the same thing for the child right pointer we'll go ahead see a underscore and we have the uh, smooth laser now something else to be aware of is in these um, option fields here uh, this is where you can actually uh, set some of the options that you want uh, so for example this radio menu, if they want to enable the haptics or the mini scale we can change those settings in this uh, so whenever it's instantiated when it gets created from this pawn, uh, the default settings will go initialize these variables to whatever is set here. So this is one place you could set variables up directly. And the same thing for the uh, the pointer. If we wanted to allow 3D teleporting or if there was a laser pointer, it was an arc, arc one. Um, this one is uh, not teleporter. So we'll want to go ahead and put can teleport and turn that off. That'll just make it a beam because with, with this specific pack, there's already a, a teleport option. So we're just going to use the, uh, the laser pointer itself. Go ahead and save that. We'll go on to the next piece. All right, step one, we need to initialize it. So let's go to the event graph and go to the begin play. And what we'll do is in the VRE uh, example project, they have set up possession and event begin play. Go ahead and tie a common point here and we'll create a new node called initialize VR, VRI, so VR integrator. We'll open that up. I want to run this before anything else. And what this is going to do is go ahead and initialize our child actors left and right. So uh, we'll go ahead and first initialize the left. We'll set a sequence, the left side, and then the right side. So we'll get our child left radial, cast the child actor to the radial menu, store a pointer of that radial menu, and then from there call its initialize function. And then we want to go ahead and set radial menu active to not active. We don't want it to be visible when we first initialize it. Now if you want to, if you want it to be defaulted on, you could turn it on there. Uh, then the second off the second sequence, we'll go off to the um, the right hand, which is the uh, pointer child actor. We'll go ahead and cast that to a CA uh, underscore smooth laser and save that variable as a laser pointer right. And then we'll go ahead and initialize it as well. And then uh, we'll also have that turned off by default. So that was step one. Now step two, we need to go ahead and have a uh, update function. So we'll go back to event graph and go to your event tick. And then from here, uh, on the VRE, I just added a new sequence at the very end, number five. We'll go ahead and do the update for the VR integrator. 
uh, the child menus. So the first one, we'll go ahead and do the radio menu updates. So make sure it is valid and we'll pass the thumbstick. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little farther. Uh, get the motion control to the left thumbstick Y, multiply it times a negative one, and put that into in thumbstick Y on the radio menu update thumbstick, and then get the motion control to the left thumbstick X and return that to thumbstick X. Now it's important that you get the right one uh, sometimes you can, um, there's some ones that are really closely named to that, so make sure you get the motion controller L thumbstick Y, motion controller L thumbstick X. All right, then the second sequence uh, for the right pointer, make sure the, the variable is valid, and then if it is active, is the only time we really want to uh, update it, uh, we'll go ahead and put the um, uh, same thing, uh, right thumbstick Y, times negative one to end thumbstick Y, and then get uh, motion control right thumbstick X and move that into end thumbstick X. Now we'll wanna go ahead and do the uh, update thumbstick from the uh, laser pointer. It's just like the radio manual. Uh, the one thing is that we're only updating it. Uh, this will make it where we can uh, push um, the, the menu forward and backwards basically. So that's what this these are fed for. Uh, if you don't want that feature, you don't have to do this. On the other one for the radio manual, these thumbstick values actually are used for the, the rotation of the arrow, the radial arrow itself. So that's why I want to have it updated uh, every tick on that. That's pretty low cost to do that. Let's go ahead and go to step number three, which is handling inputs. <clears throat> so basically what we need to do is now since we have um, the initialize and we have a way to update the values we need for it to function correctly, we need to go to the input. So on this one, we'll go on the VRE. We're gonna use the grab right, um, which will be the trigger button for the laser to select something. So we'll go ahead and uh, just do a check to see if the laser pointer right is active, and then go ahead and uh, pass the input to on trigger press to the smooth laser child actor, and then um, <clears throat> same thing on released. We'll make sure that the laser pointer is active. If it is, we'll override the input, send it to its child actor, and so continue on through VRE. All right, so we got that input done. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, have a visibility. So step number four is be able to turn it on and off. So right now, the way that I have set up for the VRE example is to hit the gamepad special right, which is the menu button on the left controller for like the, uh, the touch. It's the little menu on the left hand controller uh, next to the X. So whenever you hit that menu, it's actually menu button. When you hit the menu uh, button, it'll pop up uh, the radio menu and change out to the laser pointer as we showed in our example earlier. So the first thing I always wanna do was when I turn on the radio menu is I wanna turn off the VRE beam on the right hand. So we'll go call its function activate beam and have it just uh, not active. And we'll make sure it's the right controller. Then uh, we'll go ahead and update the radio menu itself Again, check for pointer safety. And then what we wanna do is toggle it. So we'll pull it, is it menu active and do not. Then set radio menu active um, uh, to the radio menu itself, uh, child actor. So basically it just toggles itself. And then is the radio menu active, we'll feed that into the smooth laser and turn the maze laser on. So basically we're turning on the laser and then turning uh, off the laser based off what it was previously. So pretty straightforward. You could do that a couple different ways. That's just a quick dirty way of doing it. Um, let's go to the, the the last thing is sometimes uh, for the VRE specifically, we need to uh, worry about the other laser. So uh, there's a feature on VRE that whenever you hit the the, uh, the beam on and off button on the right hand, uh, we want it to turn on and off our light laser instead. So we'll do a check is if the radio is active, then we just uh, toggle the light laser pointer right. Basically the same trick we did to show it, we just do not feed it back, it toggles itself. And then we also want to um, make sure that the teleport, teleporter right controller is always off. So I set it here to just, uh, always turn that off. So we never turn the VRE uh, beam on same time we're using our beam. All right, so from that point forward, the uh, the gotchas that you might want to watch out for is again, the motion controller name, and then keep it straight of toggling the uh, menus on and off. Again, if you have any questions or any problems, feel free to leave a comment below or join my Discord channel, then and I can give you a hand on uh, something you may be stuck on. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, like the video. See you in the next one. Bye.